Hold on, no, I think this is wrong. This is wrong, oh dear. Yes, this is the one. This is definitely the one. Off from the hair coming out the top. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Legio X. So I have been sent a sample from the wonderful Scott at the Centurion. I will leave his channel details below. I'll leave the link of where you can find this fragrance and also give you a brief description. Now, I've got a little sample. It's pretty much gone. I've probably got a spray in there just for this video. I've given it a little wear in, but I would say this is probably more of a first impressions video rather than a full review. So Scott is one of my friends, I would say. I am really excited for him releasing this fragrance. He seems like a big kid at the moment and very excited and I can see why. This has been a long time coming. He's kept this very, very quiet, the sly old dog. I think I guessed a little while ago, something he released, I thought, oh, what's he up to there? It was still a big surprise when he released the fragrance. So Scott, well done, honestly, congratulations on this. You know what, it's a big thing. If anything ever happened to any of us and we've left this little legacy of something that we've created and put so much love and effort into, you've left something behind for the world. And I think that's a big thing. And my hat really goes off to you. I love the way the name of the brand and everything's been kept with your branding and your love of history and anything about the Roman Empire, I think this really, really suits you and the type of fragrance that you like. So again, staying true to yourself, I'll take my Roman helmet off to you. So let me give you a little bit of admin. This can be bought on the Etsy website. I will be doing a little screenshot so you can see that here while I talk to you. So it's £75, it's an EDP concentration. The perfumer is yet to be disclosed. Let me run through the notes with you while I show you a couple of pretty pictures. So it has in the top lemon, lime, apple and mint. So in the mid there is silly tomato leaf, sorry, Sicilian tomato leaf, herb bouquet, jasmine, and in the base, we have sandalwood, leather, vetiver, and musk. So I've given Scott a tiny, tiny bit of feedback on this. He sent me this sample, and I think he was eager to hear my thoughts. Let me give this a little spray. I sprayed this again this morning. You can see that is the last of it, that's gone. And you know what, in the opening, it is quite citrusy. You know, if you bit into a lemon or a lime and you get that sort of really acidic sourness to it, it doesn't smell like that. It's quite a dialed down citrus, I would say. They're not the main notes. But I do get apple. I didn't know I was getting apple, actually. Scott told me I was getting apple because I've got this sweetness running through it. And then when he's mentioned apple and I've looked up the notes, it is obvious that it's apple. You get this sort of really green, not sharp, but a green fresh apple that's very crunchy and very sweet. And that sweetness stays throughout. I think the jasmine is also helping that. I don't particularly get a floral note to this, but I think it's helping add that little bit of slightly indolic sweetness. It is just adding this little hint hint of sweetness. One of the main things that really stuck out though in the opening especially is the mint. The mint is like a, a crushed sort of almost iced mint, uh, a green note, a green mint. It's quite realistic as well. It's not like a mint you'd get in a chewing gum or a mint that you'd get like spearmint for example in sweets. It's more like a a watery mint or a water mint, but this greenness with it as well. The main, main note though, that is probably the most overpowering of the whole composition is the tomato leaf. Now, it's not completely overdone where it takes over everything, but it is, I would say, the main note that the other notes are supporting. It's got this greenness in there, the tomato leaf itself, 
Lizzie mentioned this on her review and her premiere of this, where when you take the green bit off the top of the tomato, you get that slight bittery green note from it. Now, I would take that one step further, and I've said this to Scott, it reminds me of a scent memory. It takes me straight back to being a child and walking into an old school greengrocer's and how fresh everything smells when you walk into that type of place. And it's not the type of smell that you get walking down the fruit and veg aisle in Tesco anymore. Or if you went into your granddad's greenhouse and he grew a lot of tomatoes, I think you get that real greenness mixed with the sort of sun that's been trapped and the warmth that gives off this real earthy greenness to it. Now, I think that vetiver is playing a bit of a part in that. It's adding this dry, earthy note to it. Overall, I would say this is quite a dry fragrance. It's not moist at all. It is quite dry. It's quite herbaceous, I would say. It does say it's got herb bouquet in. Not sure what type of herbs are being used, but I would hazard a guess as to things like coriander, it leans it in this slightly aromatic fougere territory, but without a lavender note in. It is like a much greener version. When I say green, I don't mean grass cuttings green. It's not, don't get mixed up with that. It leans it into sort of a greener version of something like Milano Cento. It's that style of citrusy, aromatic fragrance. The base though, right, so when this starts to dry down, eventually this sort of hint of this tomato leaf does eventually wear off a bit and the citruses have gone, the base notes start to come through. They're not obvious in the opening to me, maybe the vetiver, but not the sandalwood and certainly not the leather. The musk will be there as a base layer, as something to give it some depth and to give it some push and help it sit on the skin. But once that leather note starts to come through, with the slight woodiness, it changes completely. Now, when I say leather, it's not the type of leather you'd say on like the saddle of the horses or on a leather cow. It never goes down the territory of a heavy leather fragrance. It's just got this really smooth, almost suede note in the very, very deep dry down. It is a very, very smooth blend. It is very well blended. And the sandalwood never goes creamy. It just stays as this quite neutral, smooth note. I have another scent memory with this, with that mint. I was saying this to Scott. My mum used to have this mint, sort of lemon mint plant that used to sit on her windowsill when I used to wash up. and. I never ever got away from it. And I really like the smell. <laughs> it reminds me of washing up. <laughs> Not washing up liquid, washing up. Mounds and mounds of washing up from when I was a child. But this mint plant used to sit on this windowsill. And I have actually got a fond memory of it because I've never seen or smelt one since. So I'm holding my mum's mint plant. I'm walking into a greengrocer's. I've picked up a load of fresh, really vibrant on the vine cherry tomatoes whilst I pick up the greenest biggest sweetest apple that's there and I've crunched into that all those smells mixed together is what I get from this very technical just call me Maison Francis Meads good luck to Scott thanks again for sending me the sample and letting me try it if you're interested, obviously get onto that Etsy website. Just type in Legio X and it will be in those search results. Hope you enjoyed my little first impressions of this fragrance. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next one. Don't forget to keep smelling wonderful. What are you doing? What are you even doing right now? That is so embarrassing. Yes, hello Jackson.